Our next guest is co and CEO of Cuddlist.com. It's a website where women can pay for professional cuddling sessions. Only women, Adam, is that right? No, no. We have women clients, and we also have male clients. So we have female and male cuddlers available, and each will cuddle with any gender. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, did this all start because of the, the cuddle parties that were happening at different colleges? Oh, that's right. That's a great question. So I'm actually a cuddle party facilitator along with my business partner, Madeline Winazzo, and it's an out, off, offshoot of cuddle parties. So where a cuddle party is a group cuddling experience that uses boundaries and consent. A cuddlist, we do individual cuddling sessions uh, using a similar framework, but one-on-one -on -one cuddling. So n now that you've got Cuddlist.com, which is an offshoot of the group cuddling experience, and, and, and this is all consensual, no touching, have you found that there are other offshoots of this cuddling phenomenon where touching is uh, allowed? Well, no, touching is definitely allowed. I mean, not the whole point is cuddling and touching. It's just non-sexual touch and close stay on. So but the whole point of it is that two people can get together in a wholesome way and physically can interact with each other. So it is, a, it is all about physical touch. It's about connecting physically with another human being. I suppose what I meant is sexual touching, but that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Craigslist. That's anathema to the cuddling experience. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of places to get all of those needs met if you want them, but that's not who we are or what we offer. Hey, Adam, what about uh, married couples? Do you find that there, are married, that there are married individuals that are engaging in this cuddling because they're not getting it in their relationship? So we have... Clients, uh, we have over 200 clients a month, and they come from all over the spectrum. Uh, most of our clients are people that need to relax and release some stress and just want to yeah. feel a connection. Uh, you know, in terms of the marital status or the relationship status, I'm not really sure. I know that a lot of our clients, you know, they have some kind of maybe anxiety disorder or they're depressed and they're just lonely or they've recently lost someone and they just need some physical intimacy in their life. What, what about religious people? I can see a lot of religious people, you know, not wanting to go through with sex, and they're like, okay, it's okay to cuddle. Why? Yeah, that's so great that you said that. It's, we've had a lot of people, you know, I'm not, you know, that that are Christians that self-identify as Christians that are coming on the site, and and I, and I think it's it's wonderful. And yeah, there's a there is a way to get touch needs met uh, without making it sexual. We have a cuddler coming on board in Seattle who is a celibate monk. Wow. Yeah. Well, you just need some, some touching. <laughs> um, so there's a show on CNN on Sundays, um, and I don't remember the exact name of it, but it's United States of Shades of Gray or something like that, hosted by an African-American comic whose name I don't recall. He uh -huh. went through I, – I watched one of these. He went through a cuddle session on Sunday on the episode that I watched. And, Adam, i got to tell you, I mean, I'm completely open-minded to all this. I never felt so awkward watching something before. Is that yeah, a well, common? Well, it's, it's sort of, it's not necessarily a really visual stimulating thing to watch because two people, you know, the interactions that two people have when they're together happen on a very personal level. Yeah. So, you know, and watching two people cuddle is sort of like, you know, watching a pot boil. It's not, you know, super interesting to watch. Um, so, you know, but the experience those two people are having can be very deep, meaningful, and perhaps transformative. I, I think it was, you know, when, when this guy laid down in the girl's lap and his yeah. shoulders were all tensed up, I yeah. feel like I felt his tension more than he maybe felt it himself. <laughs> yeah, you know? maybe. I I, I can't speak to that person's experience, but I can speak to, you know, our client's experience and that most of them feel a deep sense of relaxation. There's a, 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 a hormone called oxytocin, which becomes, it's sort of like the, the love hormone, the healing hormone that releases stress and tension and reduces heart rate and has many physical, uh, psychophysiological benefits associated with it. People go to massage therapists, they go to the gym, they do all of these things to, you know, to reduce stress and make themselves feel better where the basic human need that we all have is touch, and most of us just don't get enough of it in a healthy way. When are we going to get this oxytocin in pill form already? Come on. When are we going to get what? I'm sorry? 
when are we going to get this, this uh, feel-good hormone, this oxytocin? When will we get it in pill form? Oh, I don't know, but if you, you know, let me know. I'd, I'd love to invent that, and uh, we'd make a hell of a lot of money doing it. But, you know, right now, if you go, well, right now, you, Frank and Sherm, if you, yes. when we're done talking, you're on a break, literally practice it. Hold each other, cuddle, you know, you have to cuddle, stand up and hug, and count to 20 to yourself. Try to synchronize your breathing, and that will release enough oxytocin to make you feel better for the next three days. I'll do that if you right. come in the studio. <laughs> oh, I'd rather I'm in New Jersey. I'd love to come to Tucson. Do it. I'd rather die early than hug Sherm for a count of twenty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Um, but if you come to stu- in studio, it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Many, I'd, how, I'd love to invite me. I'd love to come out. Sure. Adam, uh, how I'm many cuddlers? Sure. How many cuddlers do you have working for your website? And how can someone listening uh, participate in all this? Sure. So we'll go to the website, cuddlist.com, where you can find a cuddlist or get information to get certified yourself. And right now we have 40 people on board. I don't think we have anyone in Tucson yet, but we'd love to expand to Tucson. So if any of your listeners are interested, please reach out. Oh, my God. So I could be the first in Tucson. Yeah. yeah you could. There's... You could. <laughs> um, for someone to be a certified cuddler, what's the process involved? No record, I suppose. Yeah, actually, yeah, we do we do a criminal background check, so absolutely no record. And uh, we have a whole training program which is based on consent and holding a space for someone, uh, uh, really working with the client to understand what their needs are and keep the session non-sexual at the same time. So our director of training, Madeline Guanazzo, has a whole history of working with you know medical staff and med students and how to deal with issues relating to their patient in a very empathetic, loving manner, yet you know keeping it. Controlled, so emotional boundaries aren't going all over the place. What's the protocol if sexual arousal happens? That's got to be addressed in the training of yeah. callers, I would imagine. That's a great question. So if sexual arousal happens and sexual attraction happens, uh, that can happen. We're just not going to act on it. So, you know, in my opinion and, and some of my clients' experience, if you feel aroused, normally we're so conditioned that you have to act on that arousal or feel shame around that arousal if it's not an yes. appropriate time to act on it. And what happens if you just allow that arousal to be, you sort of notice it, you sort of, it's there. And if you just generally hold your position or, you know, scooch back an inch or so if you need to, what happens is that feeling that's there dissipates into all aspects of your body, and that's where you sort of really relax and relieve stress, and that's where sort of some real transformation and wonderful uh, energy takes place. Well, Adam, so in a certain sense, uh, if arousal happens and and it's not acted on, as as everyone is trained for the cuddling experience, you're really kind of simulating married life. It seems like. <laughs> well, you know, there are different stages of love, and one and one stage that you're talking about is sort of like a healthy contentment. You know, it's it's a feeling of re- deep relaxation and deep trust, and you can just sort of be with someone and. We don't. We have we have schools to teach everything with our communication workshops and how to give a speech, but we don't know how to have basic physical connection with someone, and it's a basic human need that adults are just not getting enough of, and that can cause some 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 real issues. Uh, what, what about if if you got a certified cuddlist and they like to fall asleep and snore? Is that uh, okay? No, that's, that's not me. <laughs> you elbow nope. them. You say, wake up! I'm paying for this. <laughs> uh, it's Adam Lippin, co-founder, CEO of Cuddlist.com, C-U-D-D, list, Cuddlist.com. Adam, fascinating conversation. Thanks for coming on. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate okay. it. All right, Adam, bye-bye.